When I read this gospel, I wonder why this first part, because when you read the first part of the gospel today about Simon's mother-in-law and the rest of the gospel, there is like a disconnection. Why this piece on Peter's mother-in-law? Imagine after mass, we go out, and when you're leaving the church, somebody come to you and say, follow me. Follow me, I have something great to give to you. I can assure you, the first reaction will be, who are you? I'm not following you unless you show me some ID or you tell me who are you, right? Even for us, for me, I will say, who are you? Why should I follow you? What are you going to give me? What is all this? I'm going to call the cops. You know, he, I, I love that about the U.S. Anything, we call the cops. And thank God they show up. Go back in the Congo, call the cops. <laughs> oh, just solve your problem yourself. But why can't we risk that? Why can't you just follow the person and see where the person is taking you, what the person will give you? That's what's happened here. When Peter decided to follow Jesus, Peter decided to abandon his work, to abandon his family, to leave behind all that he was doing. Peter was taking an enormous risk by following Jesus because he had no guarantees for what would become of his family or how they would survive without him. And one thing I love about uh, this series, The Chosen, I know many of you have watched that, is the debate, the conversation, and sometimes the tension between Peter and his wife. Because you are married. How can you just leave your family for a random person who just tells you, follow me. I will make you fish of men. And just like that, you just go. Really? But we see something today different. Today we can understand why Peter chose to follow Jesus. And there are two great experiences that made Peter to risk everything to be with Jesus. The first one is a spiritual experience and the second one is the a physical experience. The spiritual one is when you read John chapter 1 verse 42, the first meeting, the first encounter between Jesus and Peter, there was this exchange of glances between Jesus and Peter. And the Bible says Jesus looked at Peter with insistence. There was that conversation. We know sometimes uh, when we look at somebody, especially when we were kids, if your parents looks at you, they don't need to say anything for you to understand what they want to tell you. If they want you to go to bed, they just look at you and you know I should go to bed. Or you know I shouldn't do that. Today it's a little different. You know, you can look at your kid, they look at you, they say, what? But before you don't, they look at you, you know what to do. Because there was that conversation. There was a language, a dialogue. And that's what happened, the first encounter between Jesus and Peter. What did they say? We don't know. But for that moment, inside, Peter was convinced that there is something that is going to happen to me with this man. That's why when Jesus told him, follow me, I will make you fish of men, there was no doubt. It was like we say, love at first sight. Peter looked at Jesus. Jesus looked at Peter, and they were like, we'll be together. The second experience is the miraculous catch. After that one, Peter was convinced that this man will never let me down. This man 
will take care of those who depend on me. And so today, when we're praying for ourselves and for our family, let us dare give up everything for the Lord. Let us try him. Let us try to follow him and to let him take care of those we love. Because sometimes we try, we try so hard, but nothing is happening. But the moment we try Jesus, things happen. When Jesus calls, he takes care of those we leave behind. And that's what's been my conviction since I joined the religious life, because being the firstborn in my family, the family expect from me to be there when my parents are not there. But I decided to join the religious life, to leave everybody behind. And since I joined the religious life, I can assure you, God has been taking care, not only of me, because everywhere I go, it's like here, you take care of me. Every time you smile, every time you say a prayer for a priest and for me, I feel that. And that's why every time I come here, I can say I'm happy, I'm healthy. Because I know by giving my life to God, God will take care not only of me, but care of all those around me who are helping me to grow and to thrive as a priest. And so today, as we're praying, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that we may continue to give our lives to God. We may continue to risk our lives with Jesus, knowing that when we risk our lives, when we give up everything to serve him, he will take care of us and of the people we love. Thank you for participating in the digital liturgy today. The digital ministry touches the lives of many people, as does almost 80 other ministries here at OLPH. Grateful for the community uh, that connects to OLPH through this digital forum. It's unbelievable how many people are able to access the liturgy and other events because of this ministry. Please consider supporting OLPH all of your sacrifices help to sustain this parish and to keep moving us into the future. Thank you very much and keep watching.